Okay, we've been talking about the four classes of systems that are typically seen in engineering, from mechanical at its smallest to organismic people using those mechanical systems to societal systems that form larger aggregates of organismic systems and people doing things with their mechanical systems, and at the highest level, the ecological systems that form the overall context for our engineering. And again, as industrial and systems engineers doing systems engineering, we almost always focus our scope at the societal system level. Collections of people using mechanical systems to accomplish ends within an ecological system. So the societal system is our scope as we work through our systems modeling. Likewise, for any given system, we're interested in modeling both the system as it stands as well as it's what we call the extended system, those environmental variables around the system that need to be modeled and understood in order for the system to have appropriate context. As industrial and system engineers, we're not just modeling systems, we're actually modeling extended systems as they fit into their working environment. With those two perspectives in mind, we can start to generalize the ways we use a form of bubble charting to represent aspects of our system's design. Here's one in healthcare. Much of what we know about a patient is actually limited to what we see her or his role as a patient. Um, so really, patient is a role. The organismic system that we're typically dealing with in healthcare is a person. People are organismic systems. So a person is an organismic system. A patient is a person in a given role within the healthcare setting. Uh, so I refer to that as an organismic role. It's a term I've invented on top of our general model to say a role basically is a societal system that only one person would fill. So the patient role in healthcare is a role that a person can fill. So the organismic system is the person and the patient is in the organismic role. The catch is, as engineers, we don't want to constantly be modeling it that way every time we want to refer to a patient in any of our little bubble diagrams or system diagrams. So this particular version can collapse. We have the version on the right. The patient is the organismic system. As long as we understand that the diagram on the left would be more accurate, it's not necessary to always draw the diagram on the left, that a patient as an organismic system is really a patient in an organismic role who happens to be a person who is an organismic system. But we go for simpler forms of modeling as we go through. So when you're modeling people in roles where you're not trying to model the details of the person as a person, uh, use the one on the right in your, in your system diagramming. A patient would simply be listed as an organismic uh, system. Likewise, we can talk about extensions, that extended system concept beyond the systems that we're dealing with. So the patient as an organismic system, which we just saw in the prior slide, exists within a national ecology or nation system. So a patient in the United Kingdom is very different than a patient in France, is very different than a patient in the United States. Not because the patients themselves are different, but because the national health systems in which we're discussing them are different. So patient in nation might be a way you would model an extended organismic system if you want to model the patient on the right along with certain variables that would be important to understanding how that patient fits into the national healthcare system going through. So again, it's okay to take the different constructs we've learned and combine them in shortcut ways to simplify some of your bubble diagramming of your system. Some bubble diagrams of systems end up with literally dozens of these kinds of bubbles in them with arrows between them representing relationships. So you don't want to introduce a lot of extra complexity to the diagram that isn't really needed for your system scope. Sometimes, you might need the model on the left if the point of your system's modeling is to really focus on national variables. But if you're just trying to represent a patient in a national context, the diagram on the right would do just fine. Another thing we do in our system diagramming is take the bubbles that represent systems and combine them into larger systems. So in this particular example, we combine two organismic systems into a societal system. So the patient is an organismic system, and their caregiver might be an organismic system. It could be a parent or a spouse or a good friend. But the caregiver of a patient is also an organismic system. When we put them together, we end up with a patient-caregiver pair. The pair is now a societal system. It would need to be modeled that way. You can't model a patient-caregiver as though they're a single person. Uh, because the modeling constructs will tend to, to break down in that. So this is a way to combine organismic systems into the lowest level societal system. So the patient caregiver is not an organization in the traditional sense. We talk about societal systems in industrial engineering, uh, but a family unit uh, or even just a couple uh, or siblings are in fact a societal system to the extent that they interact on that basis. 
Now, if I take a more complicated version of these bubble diagrams, we'll often have to draw. You might look at something like this. Here's a hospital as a society system that includes one or more providers who are organisms, so nurses and doctor's staff, technologists. The providers in the institution are the people that form the staff of the hospital, presumably. So this is one way you might model that to show that the, provider, the providers are components of the hospital societal system. Now, in reality, there are better ways to model that. So, so I talk in terms of role alignment, because really, I come back to that concept of role on the prior slide, because really the hospital has a series of societal roles in them. Uh, so just like I had an organismic role earlier, where I said an organismic role is a societal system that only one person would be in, the societal role fills the same gamut. So the hospital really doesn't always have providers in them. Doctors don't work in hospitals. They simply have attending privileges at a hospital. They're not part of the hospital. Uh, so in that sense, the provider is a social societal role that is part. So hospitals recognize a role for providers, uh, but those, the people that fill those roles aren't necessarily part of the hospital. So the lower part of this diagram on the right looks again at the person as the organismic system in an organismic role of being a provider which you saw earlier, we can collapse to just say a provider as an organismic role. But this model on the right is more complete. It says hospitals, as one of their components, has a role for a provider. And a person as an organismic system has a role as a provider uh, that they can serve. And the line between them shows that the person as provider fills the provider as societal role. So an organismic role can be unfilled or fulfilled. You could have vacancies in the hospital is not necessarily a provider in every provider role. But the, the diagram on the right is a more accurate way to represent what's really going on there. That the societal system has job roles that people can fill and there are people who see themselves in a role that could fill that job. So the shorthand way to draw that one, the way I would prefer to draw it, is not the version on the right. It gets too complex and it's too many bubbles all the time. But the one on the right represents it fairly well. The hospital is a societal system that has a group of provider societal roles in it that are filled by providers and as organistic systems. So to compare to the diagram at the top left that we started with, the provider, the actual organismic system has been moved outside the hospital. The doctors don't work as part of the hospital, but they do work in the hospital as an associated resource, fulfilling a role that is part of the hospital structure. Let's look at the grander scale. Suppose you're dealing with a national health care system uh, that in this sense is an ecological system. It's a large scale system, lots of cooperation, lots of components, lots of interacting parts that may be cooperating with each other, a lot of emergent properties and chaotic factors. It's just the very nature of an ecological system. So within that ecological system, we might have a hospital, a societal system that's organized, uh, made up of many, many layers, lots of smaller systems and lots of people, but a hospital societal system exists within the national healthcare ecology. Within that hospital, we talk in terms of components. So a provider organistic system might be a component of the hospital, and patients might be a component of the hospital. Now, in reality, I could argue that e neither should be, but the component portions of the hospital, of these, it's the patient that doesn't fit as well. Patients are not a component of the hospital in the same way that other components would be. So the people that fill this role are largely outside of the control of the hospital. So it's generally misleading to model patients as though they are part of a hospital. So I'm better to say that the hospital has, like we had before, patient as an organismic role. It understands the role of a patient in its function, but the people themselves who become the patients aren't part of the hospital. Those patients are drawn from a different population ecological system, just the population of the national environment, citizens and non-citizens. We draw patients as organismic systems uh, who end up fulfilling those patient roles and organismic roles. Another way we can look at not just components of systems, but let's look at how we would diagram things that are in competition with each other. So here's two hospitals in the same ecological system that would typically compete with each other, sometimes to the detriment of both. The fact that they could hurt each other is one of your indications that they are interacting ecologically. So here's two hospitals, both societal systems, taking place in the same national health care system, and they are in fact competing with each other. And that's how you would draw two hospitals that are in competition. Note that the national health care system doesn't have to be the full nation. I could have said these are two hospitals in central Florida or two hospitals in central Pennsylvania. So whatever you decide is the scale 
of the ecological system for healthcare that you're looking at is how you would model it. But hospitals compete with each other within and as components of the ecological system in which they are part. Another way to look at how hospitals might interact if you were drawing it would be to say you might have two hospitals that merge together into a single societal system and try to integrate their functions as they go through. So here's the competition bubble on the right becomes the, the integration model in, on the top there. Where here I have two hospital systems, but rather than saying that they simply exist within the national ecology, we create a new layer as, of the merged hospital system, which is a societal system. So the two together are trying to be integrated, whether they do it or not well, whether they're good at it, how they choose to do it, or what their business or market strategy is, is irrelevant to this discussion. Just this top diagram depicts two hospitals that are trying to act as a single merged entity within the ecological system in which they are working. So integration is an alternative to competition in the ecological space. A third way we tend to combine societal systems within ecologies is in systems of systems that cooperate with each other. So here I've got the two hospital, the hospital two societal systems within the national ecosystem just like before. This time I create a societal system around them that's different than the merged hospital system. The merged hospital system, the two hospitals are trying to act as though they are one organization. In a hospital partnership, they're not. The two hospitals remain distinct, but have an agreement or services that they share that tend to form a partnership. So the level of cooperation between them is different than I might expect for two hospitals that have been integrated into a single whole. But all of this always takes place within the context of the ecological system within the, the, which these social systems reside. So let's just take another way, another way we tend to model these bubble charts when we're modeling our systems is here's an example of a hospital with a provider uh, as its component. And again, our patient provider societal system pair of patient and caregiver. Let's take a look at some of the ways we might model extraneous variables in the extended ecosystem environment around these um, basic characteristics. So one might be to show a problem area. If I'm doing my systems modeling and I'm working in a con ops or I'm working in a requirements document, I might draw a diagram like this to show the cycle of issues that I'm trying to deal with as an engineer. So I might have the patient or the patient caregiver pair noticing in terms of the distance, time, cost, and stress that it's not that easy to go see their provider at the hospital. Um, and that results in a cycle of potentially avoiding or delaying care, or sometimes no-shows or cancellation of appointments or lateness and rescheduling in my appointments. And the hospital has to suffer with those administrative overheads and burdens that might be caused by the way patients perceive their environment. And the outcome of that would be actually reduced health comes, outcomes uh, for the patients. Patients don't do as well if they're avoiding care or not going to appointments or rescheduling and canceling appointments. And if the root cause of that is the distance, time, cost, and stress associated with getting to the hospital, then as a hospital, I would want to know about that and potentially model solutions around it as I go. Uh, so I look at the national healthcare ecology around my basic process and say, is there anything I can do to modify the ecology to, to potentially make it easier for those patients to get to the hospital. So I'd start looking for the variables of the extended system uh, that might relate to that. So I might look at the extended system around the hospital and say, well, what kind of parking do I have available? What kind of public tra transit do I have in proximity to it? And are there things that I can do to make it easier for my patients and their caregivers to get to the hospital? I can't move the hospital, but maybe I could offer a valet service or a, tra or a car service or something of that nature. Can I make it easier for patients to come and see their physicians? On the patient caregiver side, I might want to spend more time looking at where my patients and caregivers live, where they work. Uh, do they own cars? Do they have transit options? Uh, do, my, do the caregivers have driver availability? Or is it a case where for many of my patients, their caregiver works days and can only drive them off hours, but I'm constantly trying to schedule their procedures during the day. So if I look at the extended system around the system that I'm dealing with, I can often find variables that I can work with uh, to try to take a stab at improving the conditions in the environment. When we're dealing with the variables in the ecosystem, we tend to refer to that as the social determinants of health. What is it about our environment? What is it about our culture? What is it about our ecosystem, if you will, uh, that it helps improve patient outcomes or reduce the burden of illness and stress on, on our patients? This, that, this particular example is one known as travel burden. So to what extent does travel burden impact patient health and outcomes when I can't really change my patients, I can't change the location of my providers, but I can look at the extended system as a way to, to seek help in the environment and really model my systems accordingly. So this is a classic kind of diagram 
that we should have in our ConOps and our requirements diagrams trying to show what we're trying to model. A wonderful book that's out on the market that I recommend to anybody studying in healthcare is Julie Salomon's book called Hospital. Um, in it, she lays out an, an analysis of Maimonides Medical Center um, in New York and models it really, really well, but not so much into the details of how it operates inside, but how it fits into its broader environment. So here's an example of a book that if you read it, and I recommend it to all of you, uh, is that the medical center itself is a societal system in all the sense I've been describing uh, in this and other videos in this class. But it exists also as an ecosystem. This medical center itself is a very, very complex emergent environment that is more than just the formality of its procedures and staff. There's an ecosystem within it that you can feel if you're walking around the hospital. She describes it really, really well in the book. So this medical center itself is both ecosystem in some sense and societal systems in others. And that ecosystem medical center actually exists within the broader ecological system of Brooklyn, New York, and all of its cultural and religious uh, and civic resources and artifacts that make it possible for the medical center to do what it does. So again, as a systems engineer, as an industrial engineer, I shouldn't just be looking at the societal system that is the focus of my attention, but at the broader ecological components that influence the behavior of systems on the large scale. So really, if I do that, I'm going to tend to see that within my national health care system, we tend to engineer in healthcare at the hospital setting or some other provider or major practice setting. It isn't just hospitals. We tend to use hospitals as our classic examples. And hospitals and healthcare institutions in our national healthcare system really deal with three levels of emergent system. We deal with population health, which is an ecological factor of what is the health of our overall population as a nation, or at least in our catchment system for our hospital. How do we interact with the patient caregiver, family type roles that we have? And how do we ultimately impact, interact with our patients? So the things we do for our patients, their families, and the general population around them is what constitutes our role in healthcare. It's more than just treating for patients, it's, treating, it's helping treat a society. And societal level modeling is the best and most diagrammatic way to represent that. So be drawing these diagrams whenever you do a project to make sure you're clear on the class and type of extensions you're talking about in the systems work that you do.